Hi, this is Eli. This is Henry. And this is Abe. And you're listening to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience Podcast. The Metal Teddy Bear Experience has begun. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. This is your host, Chris. With me, I got Jesse. What's up, man? What's up? How's it going, guys? And we have the entire cast of Hammerhead. What's up, guys? How are you doing today? Doing good. How are you? So for people who can't see this right now, they're listening on the audio platform. Uh, can you each introduce yourselves and say what you do in the band? I'm Eli, and I drum. I'm Henry. I play guitar, and I sing. I'm Abe, and I play the bass. There we go, guys. Well, thank you for joining the show. It's pretty stoked to talk to you, talk to you guys right now because uh, you guys are getting incredible hype all over the internet, metal blogs, even like big ones like Metal Injection, you know, Brave Words and all that. And you guys put out a brand new record too. Let me just drop that. Grand Currents came out June 30th. With this release, can you like dive into how you guys wrote it and like got it started? Yeah. Um, the writing started in late late 2019 probably um we were still playing live at that point we kind of stopped to start writing the album and uh, we actually haven't played it since then so like a year and a half um so we wrote it from like probably november to march and then we recorded it mid-march um the writing process was kind of it kind of consisted of like we had we aimed at like seven or eight songs. We only got to seven, and then we ended up cutting one after we recorded it. Um, so yeah, they're, they're all long, so there's, it's still a full album length. But it we we take we take a long time to write songs. We're very particular about what we keep and what we don't. And do you guys usually like uh, have an idea what you want to go for, or do you guys just kind of? I mean, you guys all live together. You probably just jam it out at some points, right? Yeah, we don't have to plan jams or anything like that. It's kind of nice at this point. So we just kind of go downstairs and play. And uh, yeah, we don't really uh, have anything contrived for what we want to sound like, like on a specific album. We just kind of, we know what we're liking at that point, what influences we like at that point. We kind of take those with us into the jam and then whatever comes out, comes out. Well, you, you see a lot of influences online. A lot of people are saying, like, oh, you guys sound like this. You have this in your sound and whatever. But for you guys, what do you think you guys resemble the most? What influenced you guys the most? People are generally right. Um, right now, currently, I would say uh, our top four, and we say this a lot, are uh, Meshuggah, Gojira, Tool, and <laughs> Mastodon. Those are our top four right now. But, yeah, I mean, it, it changes. Those are the ones we're, we're emulating um, with the new, new, like the one with the stuff we're writing right now. Those are the main influences we're taking into the writing process right now. That's a great top four. Holy shit. <laughs> I was checking out because like, you know, when you hear like, obviously I was checking your music out for the interview. And when you hear like, it's like it's a band, it's a younger band. It's like, OK, let's, let's see what's up. And it's just dirty and heavy and awesome. I was just like on my car ride back from the city. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's going to mosh. Well, Go on to Henry Hudson and just punch somebody. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank <laughs> you. But when you said Matt's not, I was like, yeah, I could see that. And it was just like. It's really yeah, interesting. They were probably the biggest influence on that on, album. on the last album. They yeah, we were listening to him the whole time. We okay. love Mastodon. I could see that. Do you guys? Uh, did you ever see them live? Me and Eli have. Yeah, oh, um, I, I will still say that I know they get some flack live lately, but they, that was the best show we've ever seen. I think. Damn right. Amen to that. Yeah. Every time, like, dude, I suck as a drummer. Eli, by the way, you crush it. <laughs> every time I see every time I see them live, I leave it. Ask Chris. I'm like, dude, we got to go home and practice. I don't give a fuck if it's yeah. one in the morning. We have to go and practice. They're so good. We have to get at least one percent better. Oh my god, they're that's, so good. That's literally exactly what we did. We got home from Mastodon. We skipped this. We, it was Coheed and Cambria and Mastodon. We skipped Coheed and Cambria to go home and jam Jeez. after Mastodon. I do I like. I do I love. I, oh, you so you went to the Every Time I Die Coheed and Mastodon tour? Yeah, the Crack the Sky one. So reunion good. yeah or uh yeah. Re, like the full 10 year thing yeah they played yeah, yeah they just played that album. yeah dude that's a banger to go to yeah well dude you guys do them justice dude when you guys and you guys don't like sound like a carbon copy either it's just like you could just tell like oh yeah they listen to it but it's your own thing it's awesome yeah thank you thank you we appreciate no problem. it 
Yeah, I mean, you're mashing all the like gener genres together too. Like, I hear a lot of like um, old school like Mastodon, like you said, but also the new Mastodon. And then we have like uh, I heard some like Death Angel and stuff like that in Gojira, and I just love the production too on it. Now I know you're writing some new stuff as well. Are you guys thinking about changing your production style? Are you guys getting someone to help you? Because this was all self-produced, right? It's well, it's not. Uh, I'll let you take this one, Eli. But uh, the it's not self-produced like the. Essence of Iron, the first EP was more or less self-produced. We didn't do that in a studio. We did that in the basement with uh, two guys, Dan Whitmer and Josh Cole from a local band um, from Kansas City. Those guys helped us make that album. It was kind of in our, like out of our basement, though. The Grand Currents album was done in a studio, uh, Cypher Sound Studios in Kansas City, with um, produced by a guy, Luke Smith, who's like a close friend of ours, um, sort of like the mentor of the band. Um, so he's going to do the next album too. Uh, you can take the production side of it though. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say the production on the last album, it was, uh, exactly what we were going for when we were writing, but, um, now for our new stuff, I would say we're going for more of a, like, uh, an open sound, if, if you will, because the, the old, uh, the album, we, the, the grand currents ha is very thick. Like it's, it's super thick and heavy. And uh, it's really good for, for the style we were going for there. But yeah, but I, I think the next album, we're going to go for um, definitely a more open sound. More definition, probably probably a left and right guitar only instead of like four. Um, just, I, I would just like a, a cleaner sound, but it's, uh, it's that, that's not it. Just like, you know, more definition, not cleaner because it's going gonna, it's gonna to sound dirty. <laughs> well I, I get what you're saying there also because like you guys do like uh you guys have a lot of technical parts also you guys like to play with time a lot too so it might make it a little easier for like maybe the listeners because there was a few parts again i was like all right what the hell i was like yeah no yeah. The next album that's that that is a huge part of it because i i after sitting with the album for like eight months um or sitting with the songs after they're recorded for like eight months i can definitely see how somebody would just be uh, like turned off listening to an odd time signature that's so uh, like sludgy or, you know, not, not defined enough. Yeah. So we're doing way more odd time signature stuff now with the newest stuff we're writing. So we need to get it clean, cleaner, you know, just tighter in general. Yeah. Well, you guys already sound really tight. Is that like a lot of the tool and the sugar you guys have been listening to basically just like funneling that, you know, because oh, yeah. again, for like, for younger, for younger pals here, like you guys are, Crush, like it just like really flowing through it like there was just parts where it was just going between time over and over again i was just like Dude, that's really awesome i did not see that coming. also for how like again dirty and heavy it was you don't see those two mix a lot like i don't know if you guys are fans of knocked loose at all Are you guys fans of that band? Uh, yeah i yeah they they might not know them but i i do know them yeah we yeah we're, we were gonna do maybe a show with them soon i think oh, well nice. that would fit because let me yeah. tell you there was like there's a lot of times like you guys would fit pretty hard it's just really like Obviously, you guys have a lot more like time playing than they do. They kind of come in and just hit you with a bat, basically. They just don't <laughs> care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like you guys, yeah, you guys bring the pain. It was awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. No problem. Yeah. So just so uh, listeners kind of get to learn who Hammerhead is, I have a cus um, a segment here, Get to Know the Band. I'm going to ask you guys. I mean, this is probably going to be fun because you're all brothers, too. So I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to tell me which member best fits it. So who's the funny guy in the group? Mm, Abe, <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? You, are you witty? You just quote a lot of things. But what do you do? Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, like movie quotes. Um, he kind of messes with us, even though uh, he's weaker than both of us. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I like it. I like it. Uh, what's your favorite TV show or movie that you quote a lot? Abe. Uh... Mostly Marvel stuff. Marvel like, stuff. <laughs> he's a, a bunch he's of a Marvel guy. Movies. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I actually just finished watching Falcon Winter Soldier. I can't wait for the. That's what his favorite thing. Now. Yeah, Gosh. there you go, man. No spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut. All right, next question. Um, all right, this one's the opposite. Who's the guy who's most likely to complain? Eli. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you gonna defend yourself? Why do you complain all the time, man? <laughs> 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 I mean, I don't agree, but I guess it's not my 
<laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, well, sometimes like Jesse's the complainer over here because he'll make it funny though, at least with with his complaint. Yeah, no, that's actually that's actually true because when he complains, it's kind of funny, so I can't really be mad. Yeah, right. <laughs> our, our our feet hurt. We're tired, and you guys didn't tell us when, like, how long the trip would be. So we got to let you know. That's a problem. <laughs> Okay, uh, who's the guy most likely to found be found sleeping? Who takes a lot of naps? Oh, it's me, Eli. <laughs> my man, my man. <laughs> takes a nap almost every other day. Yeah, that's not that's not my style. Or Abe, that's all, Eli. Nice. I like yeah, that though. I feel like it's a, it's mostly been the drummers. Every time we ask this question, I feel like they're the ones usually the ones like passed out. Like actually, I had a uh, I forgot what band it was, but the guy said like whenever they would start, I think it was Gizmachi actually. Whenever they would start doing something. Like, you know, loading in and out of the trucks. Yeah, the yeah. guy be sleeping on the phone somewhere, just like avoiding it somehow. <laughs> yeah. Classic drummer move. <laughs> it's, it's tough. Good drummers get exhausted. It's just like, <laughs> just exactly. is what it is. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, all right. Question number, well, I forgot what we're on. But anyway, who's the most energetic in the band? The drummer, all so you're of, all of us, all of us. That's kind of a cop out answer. All of us, I'd, I'd say me. It's me. Yeah. Yeah. He, he does <laughs> the most work. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I'd say him. Are you like the the manager right now of the band, or do you have someone else for that? <laughs> uh, we got we have managers. Uh, we have a management company, but like I I do most of like the uh, like interacting with them and social media stuff. Okay. Oh, so you run the social media accounts, so all of them? Yeah. Uh, I'd say mostly Instagram, and then I like when I post on Instagram, I'll repost it to other stuff. I like if it's a big thing, like a video, then management does that. But I do most of the small social media stuff. I got you. So fans reaching out to them, you know, you're talking to Henry. <laughs> yeah, they always ask that. I'm I'm usually the one they're talking to. There you go. Um, all right, and who's the one who's always hungry? Who who wants to eat? Uh, I'm yeah, I'm pretty yeah, hungry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. And uh, I feel like I always want to eat, but I feel like Jesse is always the one initiating it, too. So I'm always like, all right, I'm down. <laughs> what the hell, like man? The most, but I eat the most. You're never hungry, I guess, because he eats so much. <laughs> Do you guys ever get all the fast food joints and eat them in one night? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm guys, a fast food king. I ever love since fast you guys food. Got cars, you guys sure. hit up fast food. Yeah, I don't know. I oh, dude, a lot. <laughs> Seeing your chin kills me that you say that. My chin doesn't look like that, and I'm a fast food. <laughs> maybe, maybe later in life. I think I'm getting close to dying. I guess that means as a fast food king, as you lose your chin, I guess it's just, you make room for the younger ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was get to know the band Hammerhead edition. So going back to the, I mean, what you're writing right now, I guess I call it a new album in the works. Uh, how much do you have done for it? Like demos, at least, or anything like that? What do you have? Um, we have, I'd say, uh, four and a half songs right now. We have uh, the fifth, we have the skeleton for the fifth. We have, um, but they're shorter this time. So we're probably going to aim it like, I don't know. I actually, I couldn't say that we, I would ideally like to have eight, but we could just end up with the five we have now. We don't know. I mean, it like depends eight tracks on, on the album. Yeah. Yeah. Like we could end up with just the five full length tracks we have now they're not as long as last time so it'd be a shorter album but um we both we all kind of feel that like maybe like even though 50 minutes like six songs 50 minutes wasn't that long for the last album it almost felt a little long so just like make every song as perfect as you can make it and like quality over quantity kind of for this album maybe cool all right. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, you're coming from a di different generation right now. Do you guys rather like singles than albums? I know that's a popular trend oh, right now. Well, no way. Albums. Like, like, it, yeah. I don't, I don't care that people listen to singles. Like you, I listen to singles obviously too, but I like the, the band obviously means for you to listen to the album. Cause why else would they make the songs in this particular order or like have interludes or like make it cinematic? That's what we try to do. So I like to listen to albums how I would want somebody to listen to it, an album that I would make, you know, or that we would make. My man. I hate when people put shuffle on, dude. Oh, shuffle's <laughs> – no, shuffle's stupid. I don't even like Yeah. That. Like, I guess, I guess if it's – I guess, yeah, <laughs> get out of here, dude. It's my podcast now. Beat it, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Damn. worst, dude. I forgot what album. I think it was a Between Black Dog Murder album. Well, yeah, you can't do that for them. It was Between the Bear and Me, I, I, a great misdirect. I had that on shuffle. So Jesse was about to expect, like, oh, a, yeah. you know, the following track, oh, and it wasn't. He's like, how could you do this to me? Like, my brother did that with Black Dahlia Murder, dude. It was going into, like, the next song. I was like, here it comes. And it was just like, 
not death metal. I was like, are you shitting me? <laughs> I was like, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like uh, you memorize those. Yeah, any album, like the transition is like it makes part of the song for you, especially if they meant it like that. Oh, yeah. Even at the beginning when they had streaming and they have like, uh, I guess there's a setting for it. I always forget they hit it. But when they just have the second to load the song and it pauses, it kills me. Even oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> Spotify is pretty good about that now, but it used to be like, come on, you're messing up the album. Yeah, oh, dude, I'd lose it. I'd, I'd just go to a podcast at that point. I'm like, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My day. <laughs> you lost a <the> listener. <laughs> yes. I'm um, going to Deezer. Fuck you guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> with, the, with the new album, too, I'm not saying that you guys need it, but have you guys um, got any like practice, You know, any mentors for anything? Have you guys been working on anything like that? Yeah, I, I uh, was uh, doing drum lessons uh, from last summer. I mean, not probably, a while. No, probably, probably five months of it. Um, and it, yeah, that that was mainly the practice I did. Is that someone um, in like, like I'm, I'm town getting, nearby? What do you say? I was gonna say, is that someone like in town nearby or some like virtual? Yeah. Like I know like some popular musicians like Paulo for bass. If you want to learn bass, he'll do lessons it, like that. It's local. Yeah, it was local, but it turned virtual, obviously, because of, you know. Yep. Uh, it, it was, like, split in between March. So, like, I had him in person and then turned to virtual. Are you self-taught? Is yes. that your first lesson? Yeah. Yeah. That was my first lesson. Those, yeah. are, like, those are, like, chops lessons, right? Like, they were, yeah, you got they were jazz. Like I did jazz, lessons, jazz lessons, yeah. Ever since you got into Thomas Take, you've, like. <laughs> That's a great, yeah. yeah. Thomas to do you know actually like how do you all pick your <laughs> instrument is that like you guys you're like oh we're gonna make a band so you can't be the same instrument as me or are you all just gravitated to your own thing <laughs> i was born with a guitar yeah, that actually <laughs> just kind of happened with uh a abe plays drums too and he's like as good at drums like he has he has an electric drum set yeah he's yeah yeah he's probably better at drums they they both have like natural rhythm i have i don't <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I for this album I'm working a lot of my vocals too. I don't I'm not taking lessons, but I mean maybe later. I I kind of gotta learn to not ruin my voice every live show because we haven't done a lot of tours yet or a lot of shows back to back yet. But I, I I bet if I did that right now, I I wouldn't know how to like keep my voice for the whole tour. So I gotta learn how to do that. So is it just sore or do you like almost blow it out? Is it yeah. kind of like what kind of it's is just it just sore. like tired or fatigued? Yeah, it's just sore, you know, like I, I don't blow it out like for one live show, but definitely if I'm doing like a whole day of recording like I did for the last album that I couldn't talk the next day at all. So that's yeah, dude. Yeah, I got to yeah. I got to figure that out. Yeah, dude, watch out. Watch out for those pipes, dude. You're a monster. Don't ruin it. <laughs> yeah, I got to learn to control it. I feel the, the popular one I always hear is uh, Honey and Tea. Uh, Matt Heafy. Yeah. I mean, if you're a fan of Trivium and Matt Heafy, he always talks about his um his vocal remedies or whatever you want to call it, what he does to protect his voice. So yeah, that's yeah, I I, I still he had like a whole. Arizona I swear to God, it is like it is a foreign language to me how to do that. Like I've heard all that stuff. I've literally listened to every metal vocalist's advice that they like give in interviews and stuff like that. And Matt Heafy, I know he blew his blew his voice out maybe once or twice. And um, definitely twice, yeah. Yeah, he maybe more than that, but he, he used to just go full out, like scream as Damn. you would with like untrained, which sounded awesome. But uh, <laughs> you know, scary. like I I've Yen's Kidman from Meshuga, he literally always says that he basically has no technique and just keeps it up by doing it all the time. So <laughs> and he's like the most consistent singer I've ever heard in my life. Yes. So yeah, I always say yeah. that. Like he always sounds the same. He always yeah. sounds not like in the bad way, but you know, what I mean, consistent all the time. Like, oh yeah. my god! He, I mean, he's fifty-two and he sounds like he's still thirty. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so well, he. I, it's I don't all... know. I I'm still waiting for the right advice. I don't know. I'm still yeah. working on it. You'll figure it out. Also, it seems I don't know how it's possible, but it seems like I guess it makes sense. Genetics, like, because there's some guys like the Kill Switch Gage singer Jesse, where like he blows his voice out. Like we were gonna go yeah. to a show and he had to go get surgery. He had polyps on his like vocal cords. Yeah. And yeah. there's guys like every time I die, apparently he has a rough time or the devil wears Prada. He like becomes a monk. He just doesn't talk for like a day in between. You'll just yeah, like, see, that's, yeah. You can do that. You, I've seen guys just not talk on tour that I don't yeah. want to do that, but you can. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's other guys who just drink a beer and they go on stage and just scream like a maniac. It's like, what the hell? 
like the die artist murder dude that dude looks like a haggard surf dude from australia <laughs> and he just walks on sounds like a demon i'm like what yeah, <laughs> it's almost like it's where he gets his voice like a uh, riley gale we opened for power trip uh r.i.p riley gale but we opened for power trip uh two years back and he drank and smoked like all the way up until the show for like two hours and it sounded awesome <laughs> yeah it's 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 weird yeah also I'm not gonna lie let me yeah yeah yeah, right? yeah. It's kind of the same forever it's weird as <laughs> shit dude it almost kind of benefits too if like you're not a great singer too you just kind of expect to like dave mustaine just like dude he sounds goofy just tell him to sing <laughs> like, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. dave said he sings differently on the albums than he does live so i guess he tries like a like a less harsh version when he does it live because he's i think he said like you know fans won't really hear it as much when they're there i mean obviously on recordings you'll hear it but when you're yeah, at dave, a crowd dave does a weird thing uh where uh, for some reason i don't know why i always kind of considered dave like a clean singer when i was like getting into megadeth i don't know he just sounds yeah. cleaner, like on the on the joey belladonna anthrax spectrum but he listening back to that stuff that hurts my voice to listen to like him doing yeah. those snarls that, yeah. Like, he's really harsh in the studio. I think it's one of those things just for him, right? Like, if you try to Im mimic, like, Jonathan Davis, all those vocal yeah. lines are hard as shit because his voice is so high. Yeah. But it's, like, yeah. it's just, like, it's him talking, basically. Like, he's not, like, it's probably not straining yeah, yeah. him at all. <laughs> like, yeah. same, yeah, exactly, with, exactly. same with Dave Mustaine. I bet that's just his voice. And he, <laughs> yeah. Also, no, like, you know, like, I love his, like, I love Megadeth. But, like, if you mess up the solos, there'll be a riot. If you mess up the vocals, people are like, yeah, I get it. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's with a lot of bands I listen to. It's like the vocals, like, get them done. But, you know, yeah. other than that, do your job. Now yeah. Play the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to break into another segment called the random silly question segment. Got three random questions for you. You ready? Yes. Um, yeah. Now you can, uh, you guys can all answer them together or separately, however you guys want. Uh, the first, well, this one is probably going to be different for all of you. Last thing you Googled. Be honest. <laughs> you can look it up now on your phone. Oh, actually, no, no. We, well, From we have school thing. School thing for Abe. <laughs> um, you guys are in Hammerhead now. Drop out of school. Go. Let's go. Electric <laughs> Doja Cat naked, be honest. I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I didn't hear. <laughs> yeah, YouTube. We YouTube. Oh, okay, there you go. All right, good. At least you didn't Google us, dude. The last guy got bummed out. That was funny, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I Googled you. And I'm like, oh, I'm, so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought I was going to be on the radio. I'm also, again, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, because I do I do two shows. I do one for the radio show at WMSC, and I do one of the podcasts here just on YouTube and Spotify and all that. So, like, I've been spinning your stuff on the radio show, by the way, too. So, Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I like the, the podcast format. It's more fun because you can kind of just talk instead of a uh, – segment like minute segments you know yeah yeah the radio ones are always like cut short like ugh, i had joe on from gojira and it was really short and condensed i was like damn it i want yeah, to yeah yeah him, you know yeah it's not as fun it's more fun to just you know talk exactly and ask random silly questions and ask um, random silly yeah. questions. <laughs> question number two this one's a little more dark but it could be fun would you rather know how or when you'll die <laughs> Ooh. How? hard question how? dude how you want to know how I, 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 why not when when would be so scary when, die at all. when would be terrible <laughs> <laughs> definitely, Dude, definitely what, if, what if it was like in four years <laughs> put a gun uh, to my head right now i won't even fucking blank dead i'm not scared yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 if, if i if i just know how. if i just knew like shipwreck then okay mm -hmm. don't go ship, on a ship don't i just bath though that's probably, really it, if you knew you. how it probably wouldn't happen what'd you say I said he's like shipwreck. I just avoid like the ocean. You yeah, know, yeah. I guess that's. Or you like, take a like, bath and your brother hits you in the face with a boat toy. <laughs> <and you die. laughs> like, like final destination, life finds yeah. a life uh, finds a way. Little oh, file, file that under shipwreck. Kerbal. <laughs> he died in a fucking tub. He got hit by a rubber duck ship. I don't. It blew his face <laughs> apart. It was crazy. <laughs> I think the funniest answer I got was was uh, after the burial. I think it was Trent. And he goes, uh, he's like, yeah, if I knew I was going to die from like a bull in a China shop, I know I'm never going to go there. And then one day on tour, it's like, oh, let's go to this China shop. I just know my life is over. <laughs> I'm like laughing so hard at that. Yeah. Um, all right. Question no. number three. Um, which song would you pick to be the theme song of your life? That's impossible. <laughs> it's got to be one song, dude. One song. <laughs> Ombre Religioso by 
the Nacho Libre soundtrack. Oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> I, I forgot who it's by. Oh, I got to give them a shout out because that's a sick song. <laughs> it's a bad um, oh, What is that? It's mm. a good idea. Do something from a movie. <laughs> I heard of some like 70s pop song. I like those ones. The, Starman? Uh, what? Wait, is this 70s? That, that, oh, I was about to say, like, uh, Hearts on Fire from Rocky IV. I don't know if you guys know them. That's uh, like yeah. super happy ones. <laughs> oh, I like uh, Spirit in the Sky, the uh, Margarita Margarita song. Is that what it's called? Uh, oh, 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 uh, Red Bone. Come and get your love. Come and get your love. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. The yeah, funny answers I got was the theme song of Always Sunny. You know, like, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> that get angry. Ring, ring. <laughs> <laughs> um uh what do you call that simon garfunkel song uh sound of silence sound, I was gonna, sound <laughs> of silence. <laughs> that's a good one dude yeah uh, just like, one. you want permanent bags under your eyes you put that song dude it's, 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 oh late it's late, late, no, late in the evening call simon just like, oh, awesome. there you go there we go also, that, that's, <laughs> a, that's like one of the greatest songs ever that song is perfect yeah you pick like you guys pick good songs. I would have been like, dude, maybe just ruin your life and pick like Chamber of Chameleons by Mashuga. <laughs> <laughs> just have a fucking aneurysm oh, for the rest corridor, of your yeah, life. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, corridor. There. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. gonna say yeah, corridor. Like, oh, dude, that song is madness. I love that song. Or the first twenty seconds of a Future Breed Machine. Just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the breakdown of Future Breed Machine is a skull splitting breakdown. Holy shit, yeah. dude! I remember when I saw them. I was like standing firm. I was like, man, the the show's going pretty good for me. And the second the end breakdown hit, I got like booted, like three hundred booted into the pit. I was like, what the fuck? No. Like, that is all. I, I've never seen them. I, that is all I want to do is be in the pit for that breakdown. Holy shit. Oh, uh, dude, they're the number one. They're not like my, they're like all time. Like they're, I don't, I don't put them in a ranking because they're just the, like that band. Like they're just great. Yeah. I don't care they, like where yeah, they are. I, Best live show though. Like it's I was going to say, yeah, they have got to be able to, they have got to, I've never seen them, but they have got to be number one metal live show right now. Dude. I, yeah. It's gnarly. Like and then Jesse, also it changes all the time though. Nope. I'm a hundred percent. Consistent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see Gojira and be like, dude, they're like the best bit live band ever. We'll see like whoever, and he, they're the next live band ever. Well, it's only because like I like Gojira, but like live, I can't handle Gojira. I'm like, dude, they're like a hundred times better live. It's weird. Like their album is really yeah. good, but then live, I'm like, dude, why don't I listen to them all the time? Like I don't get <laughs> it. We saw them. I'm still so annoyed about this. We saw them on the, uh, uh, yeah, not not fest, not fest tour. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and well, first of all, you know, opening bands, a lot of, I, I don't want to put it on Slipknot, but like a lot of opening bands are just quieter or like weaker sounding than the main band on purpose. So we were, we had like grass tickets all the way in the back and they were quiet as hell. And I was so pissed about that. Yeah. Like we, it was like listening to headphones. <laughs> yeah. We sadly, I think, wait, did we, no, we saw them. We missed Behemoth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, Oh, missed yeah. a little bit of behemoth we missed like the first two songs of behemoth but we saw a lot of behemoth they were good yeah it's uh yeah i agree that's the only thing i love outdoor summer festivals and amphitheater shows and stuff but boy does the sound suck big yeah. bad. Sound suck. Oh my it's God. bad that it's, was like the first real one we went to and i was like come on man mass yeah. songs outdoors kind of it's like a that theater. was yeah but that was like that was a nicer theater and it was really loud though which is all you yeah need. yeah it's 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 a shame, dude, because, yeah, like, when you watch a you know, opening band just get trashed, and especially one as good as yeah. Godra, like, you're like, ah, oh, shit, man, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ever travel for shows, or you just go, like, nearby? Like, out of state, I mean. Travel for, uh, like, travel our gigs, or, or, or... Let's go both. We'll do both. Yeah, a show you've seen, both. and, like, a show you played. Like, let's say you really want to see Godra badly, you'll go travel, like, to the next state. Oh, yeah, we went we went to St. Louis, which is, like, four hours away from us, from, Metall or from Metallica. <laughs> There we go. Um, we always travel from Metallica. Metalheads do that. <laughs> yeah, that was when that was before they they came to Kansas City two years later. So yeah, I went to Montreal to see Metallica, and then Pennsylvania. I still haven't seen them in Jersey. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They, yeah. It's like they never, you know, they they come to Kansas City like once every ten years. So, <laughs> um, where we we traveled a couple places to play gigs. Like uh, one of our last gigs we played was Full Terror Assault, which is like nine hours away from where we are. Damn. And, uh, Illinois, Cave and Rock, Illinois, mm -hmm. or Iowa? Wait, no, it's Illinois. Mm -hmm. It's on the border of like three different states yeah, on, on a river. Where we were staying, it was cool. Three different states. 
That's pretty awesome because also I guess like when shows kick back in, you kind of do it's only nine hours away and you're kind of just like you got like that border in all those states. You probably get a lot of good shows, right? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a one off. So like I would have loved to do other shows on that nine hour round or eighteen yeah. hour round trip, but it was it was good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, what are you like what are you guys getting now? Are you guys getting a lot of like tour like bookings offerings and all that stuff because i mean you got metal suck shouting you out uh actually metallica said shouted you guys out in the press release as well you know so like you have all these outlets hitting you up have you guys been getting a lot of offers uh we i that kind of goes through management now like we i less than a year ago we would have just seen that in the hammerhead email but we don't really so it's kind of if we were gearing up to play shows i i bet we would be seeing the offers more, but we're kind of gearing up to go into the studio and then play shows in the fall. So yeah, we'll, we'll see those like probably in a couple months. <laughs> It'd be pretty awesome though. If you get all these shout outs and it goes and you still went to the hammerhead email, you just get Metallica. It's like from Metallica, a heart emoji. It's like, Oh, <laughs> oh Metal- yeah. love James. <laughs> 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 you guys are rad. Now it's a little more uh, professional. We don't get to see everything. Boo. That would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Are you guys um planning? Because right now you're not signed to a label, right? No, but we don't know. Like for, for the next album, it's kind of a we don't know thing. So like the money and like where the money comes from or like who who distributes it or funds it is kind of up in the air. Is that something like do you want to be signed on label? Do you like being independent? What's something that you guys want to do? I, I think we're trying to stay independent. As long as possible. Yeah, like like if, if there's no if there's no concrete, which a lot of the times there's not, if there's no concrete benefits to signing a deal, then we wouldn't do it because we're we're doing pretty well right now. We just we basically just want the, the, as many people as as will listen to us to listen to us. Like we don't, and we also need the money to make albums. But <laughs> those two things, like it's not like a uh, I don't I don't know. It's not like a who's gonna get us the biggest tour right now or anything like that. It's just, we just want the most people who are going to pay attention to the music to hear the music. Dude, that's a good mindset to have. Also, you won't like rush into a bad deal or anything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's a they, smart that's, move. That's the other thing. Like you kind of, you build yourself up and you let the people come knocking. You don't go knocking. Cause then that's where the bad deal, like you'll get signed. You'll rush into a deal if they know you're not getting any other offers. This is crazy. Where do you guys get this confidence from? I would have been gaslit <laughs> so fast. I would have sold my soul. <laughs> been like, fuck, I lost my left arm. I feel this like is, the knowledge, like the, there's a lot more knowledge about it now. Yeah. Bands this all yeah, this also stems from that. Uh, yeah, this stems from us watching a lot of documentaries. <laughs> yeah. Of yeah. Get it wrong. And also we back in 2016, we had this video of us plant when we were little, like little tiny and uh young, even younger than we are now. Um, we had this video of us playing Metallica covers go viral on, uh, Facebook. Facebook. And that, that was when you're reading the, the, the Metallica shout out from probably back then, I'm guessing. Um, but that whole thing happened in like a bunch of big shows like Ellen and, um, America's Got Talent, like started, you know, taking interest in us and they were all dicks, like all of them, (laughs) (laughs) they were all terrible. So we kind of were just like, we'd rather not be known as the kid band on Ellen or on America's Got Talent. Let's just build this from the ground up. So a couple years later, we're like getting there. That's where we're like, that's where we're at. That's a fucking good, that's a good deal, dude. That's smart. Cause yeah, yeah maybe you go on America's Got Talent and then you just have like, what was it, one of the Spice Girls? I, for, I forgot her name. She goes, <laughs> oh, you guys are so cute. I love you. Yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> it's like, oh, great. Thank you. Yeah, for, a second, <laughs> yeah. for a second, it'd be fun to like, I have your friends know you went on America's Got Talent, but other than that, it'd be like, well, now that's you forever, kind of. You're just like the little kids. Yeah, you're pigeonholed into that. Yeah, I just we don't want to be pigeonholed into that. Yeah, dude, well, that's a fucking smart move, guys. You guys are crushing it. Well, thank you. Yeah, hopefully we can yeah. make this work independently, or else we're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, nah, you guys are fine. Well, also because you're not putting a time limit, it's smart. I remember Matt. You ever listen to the band Periphery? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here, Chris. Uh, who's Periphery, Jess? They're good. They're good band. Great band. Great group. Uh, I met a well. I, I you know I got a few lessons from Matt Halper and Humble Brag, but he said to me, he was just like, "Well, all these people rush in music. They're always like, oh, I gotta get signed. I gotta do this like tomorrow.'" 
And he's just yeah. like, well, you want to be a drummer or a guitarist or whatever you want. It's your life. Well, you have until when you die to yeah. make it. So it's like you guys are probably still in school, I'm assuming, unless you guys are just gangsters and stay home all day and play music. <laughs> yeah, school. It's just like, so, like, you guys got stuff going on. You guys seem to be doing crushing it with all these other responsibilities going on. So, yeah, just keep doing it, man. You guys are putting out banger albums, so. Well, that, yeah, it's exactly, it. thank you. We appreciate that. But as long as we can do what we're doing, I don't, I don't know why we change it. Like I used to be of the, until it was, it was really our dad who was like, it would be really stupid for you guys to go on these shows and like sort of ruin your career before it gets started in, in his opinion at the time. And now we totally yeah. agree, but um, we didn't, we, yeah, I, I hated that back then. Like we, I was of the mindset that if we don't get like recognition or, or like, a lot of plays or whatever our, our attention when we're young then it's gonna be all for nothing because like the thing is about us that we're young but now it's like a couple years later is like that's the stupidest thing in the world because the playing field evens when we all turn 20 so it's yeah. you know like we're still i guess young compared to a lot of other bands but you got to be as good as everybody else when you're that age my man yeah definitely just keep doing it. also smart dad because yeah, a lot yeah, of parents they're, might they're, just like that, <laughs> It might just cheerlead her out. Like, it'd be crazy. But like, my kid was on that show. It's like, cool. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the opposite of what he wanted. It was tough love at the time. I, we were all pissed, but it was, it, it worked. It, it was definitely the right move, I think. You know what, man? I'm kind of upset I fucked up that song name. Which one? Chamber of Chameleons. We're fucking Corridor, amateur. Man. I know I messed it up. I'm so upset. <laughs> <laughs> hit me what's, as I what's hit the favorite me. song off that album dude it's tough is that the one with uh dude i, I saw, i'm pretty sure that's the one with a uh, new millennium cyanide credits on it right yeah yeah dude, dude, I know, it, it's a cop out to pick uh I pick singles lead. <laughs> yeah i <laughs> love uh, album. <laughs> dude, i like uh, the break the yeah, bones through sinews in motion or whatever no, i'm kidding <laughs> but uh yeah, dude, that song, it's hard to pick. I, I hate picking singles, but yeah, that song is always a go-to. I fucking love that song. All I, I, I think every song in that album could be my favorite, but right now... I gotta go Neurotica. Is Neurotica. Neurotica. Yeah, yeah, that's a banger. Yeah. Um, Mouth Licking What You Bled, probably. Or Exquisite Machinery of Torture. That group is awesome. Yeah, that might be, like, the best. Like, I don't... Because I've been, I've been jamming a lot of Dillinger, like, the last couple days. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I just go through these phases. I just go, like, you know, I like this band again. Like, I haven't listened to this band yeah. in a while. I'm going to listen to their entire discography. And just, that's like, kind of, run that's through. That's kind of what I do now, too. Yeah, and Meshuggah's on its way back in because I've been listening to them again slowly, and I'm like, fuck, I got to have to do this again. Yeah, and Frederick's I'm, back in the band, and they're doing a new album and everything. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and also, it's hard for me. I know it's not as complicated as the other songs, but Demurg is – I don't know how they do it. They do the same thing over and over again for the whole goddamn song. And I love it, and I'll do it every. I'm like, dude, live. I'm telling you, be don't be surprised when that's the best song you hear live. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Every time they play it, I'm like, how is this the best one? Like every time, everyone's bobbing their head just nonstop, like in a trance. I'm like, what the fuck? So good. That one reminds me of the other one in that album, the uh, "Do Not Look Down." So sick. I love those two songs. Oh yeah, dude. Also, if you got a, if you if you ever have a subwoofer in your car, don't play. I think it's I am Colossus with Colossus. Oh, yeah. like, we have been oh. we listen to that song like all week. That song is ridiculous. Yeah, it'll make you shit your pants immediately. It's kind of <laughs> I don't know. They turned the bass up way on that song. I was like, holy crap! Yeah. I remember having my good yeah. headphones on. I was like, Jesus Christ! Yeah. <laughs> like, so awesome. There's this part where they like come back to that massive like looming riff, and they put like a little lead over it. It's like the the when darkest. he says I am when he says I'm not real. And then they stop, and then they go, just so cool. So sick. So yeah, cool. Dude. That's a it's, it, I, I don't like to judge people based on things they like, but when they, people say they don't like Meshuggah, at least if they're into metal, I understand if you're like only into pop music or rap, but like, if you don't like Meshuggah, I'm kind of like, yeah, it's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little goofy. You don't like one song. One song? Yeah, it, it, I would have probably said I couldn't get into Meshuggah like three years ago, but as it a metalhead, if you're a real fan of metal, I think it's just – you just get there. Like, it takes yeah. a while. Meshuggah, it's, like, it's bludgeoning. It's dense. But it's oh, it's yeah. awesome once you get into it. Yeah. Or if you say this phrase, if you don't like them, I, I don't like you. I just like brutal shit, dude. I like brutal music. It's like, <laughs> well, you better like Meshuggah then. <laughs> it's the most extreme thing. It's one of the most extreme bands you're going to find. 
Yeah, except for maybe Cannibal Corpse Live. I was really blown away how much heavier they are. I was like, oh, holy yeah, crap. Live. Yeah, 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 for sure. Damn. Jess, right. did you play Mishuga for our music class back for music theory? No. I played after the barrel. Oh, pie, right? Yeah, people didn't get that one. That was a bad choice. Probably should have played Mishuga. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I played Mastodon, and they were just Night. like, eh. Yeah, we yeah. went to, like, our, our music theory class was not into metal at all. It was bad. Uh, Mastodon, Mastodon's another band where I was, me and Eli, I mean, maybe Eli won't admit it, but I was like turned off by them at first for some reason. I just, I, I was, like, was it the face that? tattoo? It, no, it wasn't how they looked. <laughs> I'm kidding, I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit, I, I heard Show Yourself first and I was like, okay. Like, so that's your first introduction that, to Mastodon? Yeah. Like in that, when that album came out, I, that was as recently as I've gotten into Mastodon, but they're like my favorite band in the world now. Dude, I'm so that jealous. Kind of me off. That kind of turned me off for a while. So I, I, it clicked when I heard uh, that country riff and Megalodon. <laughs> there you go. I was like, hell yeah, dude. I'm kind of jealous. It's like one of those things I know people always say, but like when you like get into something later, it's like, yeah, oh yeah. shit, because I've been listening I to Mastodon. Dude, I went to Mastodon Crack the Sky original tour, and I didn't even like Mastodon at the time. You know how mad my brother was. Yeah, I kind of forced you to go to that. I'm not yeah. forced you, but I was like, dude, was we should go to this. Uh, yeah, I was into Mastodon for like uh, I was getting into a him full I... year, and I knew Crack the Sky all the way through, and I took Eli, basically. Like, I called him before the show and was like, hey, do you want to go to this? I'm going. And he didn't know Crack the Sky that well, and he was like just getting into it as they were playing. This is perfect. I'm yeah. so jealous of that. It's an unreal out. It's still my favorite that by far. But yeah, I said that after I saw it. When I saw it, I was like, I don't know what the hell's happening. I don't know any of these songs. <laughs> and I told my brother, he's like, you fucking asshole. I wanted to go and sold out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Actually, about- yeah, we went to that Mastodon show because we were going to go see Machine Head and Metallica. Um, and that sold out. Well, you know, there was like nosebleeds, but it was overpriced and all that. And I was really super disappointed. And I got mad because my parents wouldn't let me go to that. So I missed out. So I was like, I'm going to Mastodon now. And that was like, best decision. <laughs> yeah. Best decision. Oh my God. What a great decision. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Abe? Do you go to any concerts? No. He didn't, he didn't go to that one. That was like, <laughs> he didn't go to that one. He goes, I mean, like he played, he played a lot of them. We went to, you know, what show we all liked was, uh, I think it was the same summer was uh, Avid Brothers. We went, okay. I, I know that's not metal, but like, that's all right. That show was really good. That show was really good. We don't discriminate against all other types of music. <laughs> I myself are a huge fan of Doja Cat. I don't care who hears it. <laughs> I know the beard and hat probably don't say it, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, so this is another one from uh, the Random Sleep questions. I know I already asked three, but this one's kind of like a bonus round right now. I thought it'd be fun to ask you guys. Um, what, what's something your bandmates, but you guys are all brothers. What's something you guys rip on each other for? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of a common answer, but everything. I don't um, know why you guys buy so much stuff. Buy so much yeah, stuff? Yeah, you guys, like... Well, I guess no, Eli's, buying, Eli's buying a new symbol every week. No, he's not. I'm mad. <laughs> don't let him talk you out of that. Do you break your symbol, like, all the time, like Jesse does? I will spend all my money I, on gear. I don't know I what he's talking about. I, I, I've had, like, the same symbols for, like, two you years. You bought, like, three symbols. I have had I the just, same, I've had the same guitar snare. for, like, eight years. I... Yeah, I just went on a yeah. spree because all my stuff is breaking. I had to buy a new snare, a new hi hat, and a new massive twenty-two inch cymbal. Oh, dude, my man. Man. is that a crash or a ride? Crash. Oh my man, yeah, dude. You can crash on the rides though if you're strong enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I got fucking doinked in the fucking head the other day by my hi hat. It's fucking, it's tuna canned up. It's just a piece of it flying up like that. And I hit it. I guess it was cracking across the broken symbol. And I just got ripped in the fucking face. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, it's like, was that a bug? What? And I was like, oh man, dude. Yeah, yeah, lately yeah. you've been getting hit by your, the, the sticks, like the sticks fly up, like, or not the, not the actual stick, but they splinter and like you get hit in the eye all the time. Yeah. Wearing goggles, <laughs> dude. My whole floor is just stick dust. My oh, man. That means you're ripping, dude. Yeah, dude. Well, did you ever hit yourself in the eye with the drumstick? Yeah, it like bounces up all the time. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I ended an entire day for that. I think it was yeah. like two p.m. and I yeah. railed myself in the eye. <laughs> I was just like, I'm done. And I just threw the sticks at the wall. And I was like, Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. 
<laughs> it's usually like me when I break a string, I just don't want to play anymore. And then I'm like, I don't want to go through the process of restringing it. And then I just don't do it for a while. And then I'm like, oh, am I ever going to play again? <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly what I, I have one guitar. So if I break a string, it's like, Jeez. sometimes I sit there for a week and I use like my old shitty one and it gets boring to play and I have to, I'm forced to restring it. <laughs> my man yeah this but so you spend money you don't like that abe is going to be rich apparently he's not going to spend any money <laughs> i like it smart man uh what about you guys what would you rip on abe for give me a good abe rip abe um, plays too much video games <laughs> <laughs> i don't play as much as him <laughs> my god he's jamming up is probably your biggest rip yeah, yeah. probably but yeah, yeah, video games. Too. Video games are jamming. Yeah. What do you play? Yeah. yeah. Hey, what do you play? Uh, he plays a lot of Fortnite. <laughs> oh, is it mostly Fortnite? Yeah. And... Dude, oh, you're the guy. You're the guy that killed me and said, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> 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 you're the guy who flossed on me. Oh. <laughs> oh he kills it. me. <laughs> um. Well, you guys dropped a brand new uh, music video for Foundation. Are you guys um? Thinking about dropping more videos, or you just want to focus on writing new material? Uh, yeah, well, we those we have another one coming out in two weeks, I think, if all goes well. But um, those videos were easy to do. We did them in a day, and obviously the songs were recorded six months ago, so it was easy to just like kind of lip sync along and make a music video in one day. They're both in the same location, so they're kind of similar, like a series type of video. Um, but I like. But those don't take any work on our part, so we're still writing as much as we would. You know? Sweet. Yeah. It's the way to be. Well, honestly, dude, I think you guys crush it. I think you guys are pretty fun. You guys are super smart, which is great, especially for a newer band, dude. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I dump praise on people when they come on here. So come back anytime. I'll dump praise on you. But yeah, no, mm -hmm. it's awesome to have you guys here, dude, for sure. Yeah. And anything. So Thanks besides that, yeah, no, come back anytime. You're working on this new album. Come back when you release it for sure. So is it just, are you guys planning on doing any kind of like live stream, any kind of thing like that? Or is it just strictly work on the album and just go ahead, you know? That's another thing where it's like, we don't, we don't even have the means to do that. Like we, we used to have sort of like a home studio. That's what we like, what we called it um, in the basement, like of uh, gear that was cheap, but it got the job done. And we recorded Essence of Iron, the EP on that stuff. But um, now we kind of just scaled back down to like a small focus, right? And we do like one track at a time stuff. We couldn't do a, lot, a full live stream. It would, like yeah. it would take a lot of uh, time to set that up and money that we don't really have right now. Fair enough. Cool. Yeah. It's also stuff is slowly opening up. So hopefully by the fall when you guys are ready, you guys could just avoid the whole live stream thing and just get back to playing shows. Yeah. The stuff that has the most views of us online is like just an iPhone at a show. So we'd like to do that. <laughs> Right. Oh, well, Grand Currents just dropping that album title again. Uh, you guys are doing like a special vinyl release for it too, right? Yeah, new vinyl, first vinyl we've ever done. Um, we have 400 copies, I believe. We got a thousand copies printed, but a a vinyl uh, subscription service bought 600 of them immediately. That was like the deal Sweet. that we okay. got. So we have 400 to sell. That's what we're. That's Where's the best place to grab it? Uh, Hammerhead.com. Awesome. Sweet. Cool, yeah. man. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining the show. It was a pleasure chatting with you. And again, you're always welcome back on the podcast or the radio show whenever you want. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for having us. All right, thank you guys. <laughs> and when you guys come around, I'll be sure to drop kick someone in your pit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. he interviewed me and then I just get kicked out. Get me back in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back in the show. My man. All right. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Be safe. Have, Have a good one. one. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. Your boy, Chris. We got my boy, Jesse. What's good? How's it what's going? Good? All right. I hope you guys enjoy. Your boy's a cutie. Head. What was that? I said your boy's cute, dude. Oh. This guy. Yeah, Hammerhead right. was dope. Hammerhead, Grand Currents. <laughs> Pick it up at their website, hammerhead.com. Grand Currents. Check it out. They have a nice little vinyl going on. Limited copies. So you want to jump on that right now. It's really cool to speak to a band at their early stages. You know, usually when we talk to bands, they're kind of like, you know, a couple album cycles in. They're not really a new band. Like, we're hitting up with this band, uh, you know, when they're young and putting out awesome music, too. So it's kind of cool to pick their brain. And it's funny, too, with the questions we usually have, 
They're usually for like, you know, long-term musicians who do this for like a full-time gig and stuff like that. And we had them on, we got to have a different perspective and it was a lot of fun. It was definitely awesome. Also, not going to lie, I didn't come in with any like pre-thoughts, obviously, but when you see their like- <laughs> I don't think pre- of things. <laughs> I don't think ahead. I live minute by minute. But no, when you see their ages, right? I'm like, interesting. Like, especially in this time, like, dude, like four people, four years younger than me. Like they have a dramatically different opinion about things. They don't understand my references. We haven't lived the same life. It's weird. We're only four years young. Like, dude, I relate to people like eight years older than me. I talk to them and we get references. We talk. I'm like, oh, the shit. It's going to be interesting to talk to these guys because, well, dude, they literally, what what are they? Like 10, you're 10 years older than, more than 10 years older than two of them. And, you know, you old fuck you. Uh, But, you know, and it's like, but like all of them were super, you know, you know, super professional, super like, they had the right idea about everything. It's kind of weird. I was like, dude, I guess that makes sense though. But when kids like kids, when, I, no, they're just dudes. When dudes like get in a band and they like make things happen. And I don't know how much if they had, we probably should ask if their parents had any involvement or was it just always them, but uh, whatever, we'll get them next time. <laughs> but like, uh, like dude, like the, uh, those guys answer about like wanting a label and stuff and about like the pitfalls of the industry. Like, it's kind of pissed me off actually how like professional they answered it. I was like, Jesus Christ, I wasn't he, kidding. If I was in their position, like, dude, if I got offered something, I might jump on it at that time, me at that age. Yeah. And that's why I think they're going places because not only do they have their heads on straight, they're actually putting out quality material and the <laughs> albums, the albums bang, you know, it's not like they just threw out a like, remember when we used to except for maybe stuff? eli he he seemed to have a back injury his head was kind of slanted a little bit so <laughs> uh, i'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, like remember when we recorded uh, stuff on our phones or like on like recording it was just so bad you know yeah, like, it was terrible audacity and stuff like that i mean these people you know these yeah. kids are they're putting out awesome stuff awesome material awesome production i'm gonna say awesome yeah. one more time you know awesome it's, it's actually really really good and then their music video for foundation is really well done as well i'm actually looking forward to that new video that's coming out in two weeks like they said so yeah the, you could i definitely see these guys on like festivals and tours whenever tours and festivals come around again yeah as long as they don't keep not rushing dude like especially me as a professional who understands this business i really think they're gonna go places but no for real I think they're like, you know, just don't fuck it up. Like, I think they're going to crush it. Like, they have the good music. They have the, the exposure. And they don't have, seem to have bad ideas unless they were just lying through their teeth to us for some <laughs> weird reason, which doesn't make any sense for them to do. No. Nope. Uh, they're going to crush it. And, uh, yeah, it's fucking it's cool as hell, dude. Also, again, super good, super duper awesome surprise. Listen, I'm not going to lie. I didn't think I didn't hear that sound. When I thought about them, I was like, all right, I didn't hear like this knocked loose old mastodon, like weird time signature, like jumping. I was like, this is awesome. Like it was super like I could just jam out with a beer and just headbang and just until the weird time signature part comes up <laughs> and I start moshing, like just to make up for me not being able to count. Yeah, and they've been getting a lot of press too. Metal sucks, metal injection, up rocks, and they did have Metallica on there too, but they said that was from their covers back in the day. But right yeah. now, like, you know, Metal Sucks is like these kids slay, actual wheel deal. Holy shit. These guys rip. Level slaying, they're tight as fuck. They sound great, and most impressively of all, they look like they know what they're doing. You know? Yeah, which is and great. And still right there. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah. And, and which is great because you know you you heard you saw what happened on Locking the Truth. It was that band, uh, the the other kid band that like covered like Chelsea Grin, and they got signed to like a major record label and they got kind of screwed over. Oh, uh, Unlocking the Truth did that with Sony. Remember? Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, it, it's nutty. And dude, like, think that sucks because they were talented. They were, you know just like, they're just metal fans like us. Like. Yeah. It sucks. Like, just imagine, dude, a thousand dollars of debt freaks me the fuck out, let mm-hmm. alone. It's like, yeah, you kind of owe us like a hundred grand. It's like, what? Yeah. I'm 17. Dude, remember when we got my taxes done at your house and I owed four hundred dollars and I was working a year and a half in? Yeah. That destroyed me. And <laughs> I had no bills. I was like freaking out. I was like, oh my God, four hundred dollars? That's insane to me. 
I got paid like a hundred bucks, which is crazy because it just shows how poor my money management was. But like, dude, that like ruined <laughs> me. Imagine Sony, the company goes, yeah, Jesse, you owe us a couple hundred thousand. I'm like, I don't think I'm ever going to make that in my life. How do I pay that back? <laughs> do I just, no, do just, I just drive I off the you. frog's neck? Like, I believe you with all those drum covers you're doing on your Insid YouTube channel. Yeah, there's like seven of them out. Can we put this out in like a year? <laughs> uh, where can people find these covers jess and your reactions yeah well you can find my reactions at youtube.com slash c slash incid one i think that's it yeah or just look up incident on youtube i'm pretty sure that's the url and then uh, obviously instant stream on twitter uh, obviously instant stream on twitter and instagram and then i think you got a radio show chris is this true on tuesday nights possibly I do, and it features a very well, uh, well liked <laughs> man called Aram. Yes, Aram. Aram is on the show. He is awesome. We talk about movies and a bunch of stuff as well. We talk about Marvel stuff most recently, I should say, Winter Soldier and the Falcon. I like saying it like that because it's and correct. The Falcon, really? No, it's not. But it's an ongoing joke because we make no mistakes on the Metal Teddy Bear Experience. But that's every Tuesday night, seven to ten p.m. Catch us on WMSCRadio.com or iHeartRadio, which is probably the easiest method to do. Yeah. I mean, uh, anyway, you, you can listen to it. I know a lot of people listen to it on their phone instead of their desktop, but anyway, you can find it. Anyway, you can listen. Please do. It would be awesome. That's a good promoter tip uh, move right there you just did. You said <laughs> a lot of people listen. So that's just implying that my man. Yes. That'd be me like, watch my YouTube they video. They come in thousands. Every, yeah, <laughs> uh, the thousands and the millions. And the millions. Uh, well, dude, your, your one got uh, 20K reviews yeah. views on your on your video right there. I know, bro. Metalhead reacts to video game music, Persona 5, Rivers in the Desert. 20K yeah. views, man. Which is funny because I think that was like the song I really didn't like at the time. And it was like, wow, why did that one get destroyed? I was like, holy shit. Yeah, dude, you, you got a lot. I mean, you're hitting 1K over here, 6,000K, you know, 8,000K. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm gonna, famous, dude. Dude, this YouTube channel, you guys got to check it out. And Dude, it's a, good thing, it's a good thing I'm a, I'm single now because all this, like, digital <laughs> fucking reaction boom wow. that's flying my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to get a stick and just whip them, everybody. Get out of here. It's my house. <laughs> and uh, we're going to plug the podcast as later. well. Yeah, it's on Spotify, oh. Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, all the major platforms where you yeah. listen to podcasts is where you can listen to this. Because right now you're probably watching it on YouTube, or maybe you're actually listening to it on Spotify and stuff like that. But yeah, tell your friends if you want to listen to a certain band on the show. Let us know. Yeah, like, hey, for sure. I want to hear Jesse make jokes with this guy. Yeah. We'll get him on. Also, let if you know. like, I saw my new podcast out because I used to be a Stitcher guy strictly. And then Spotify for Rogan. But now I've been doing Podcast Attic. I don't know if you can see that right there. You can't see it, right? Podcast no. Attic. I know it's terrible. <laughs> but do I look way better? Oh, I got bright again. I was about to say, oh, the dim. I looked way better in my shiny cheeks. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Podcast Attic's cool as hell. I didn't know this because I subscribed to uh, a few po- like Gas Digital and uh, a few Patreon podcasts. They give you a URL, a, a, a RSS, RSS feed yeah. link. And in Podcast Attic... Uh, podcast addict god damn it i don't know there's not even a sponsor podcast <laughs> addict you can put an rss feed so even if you go to like you go to gas digital too you can take Josta's rss feed and all of his gas digital podcasts go into it you know yep. so even yeah you know, it, it's it's cool as hell dude i'm i can't do i build computers it's stupid how much of a caveman i am <laughs> like i well, know you put up it's... with me there but you were like yeah rss feeds yeah like it's what we <laughs> like and i'm like dude rss feeds bro <laughs> oh no because sandy told me when we were starting this podcast i was like how do you listen he's a cash box and then you went into the whole thing about you were what you were saying right there too that's yeah. what cast box us too there's a lot of yeah stitch doesn't do it i had to dip dip because i was tired of going to gas digital and patreon to like listen to these podcasts i was like this is so stupid why can't i just and, I, and then when i realized it just adds the current episode i was like there we go I, yeah, yeah, mine because uh, it comes at my phone because I have a Samsung. I just use Google Podcasts. Everything co- updates right there, and I subscribe I, to it. I was gonna do that. I was trying to do that. It didn't let me do Gas Digital because there's a password lock. Oh, uh, gotcha. For yeah. some reason, it wouldn't let me do it because I wanted to use Google Podcasts. It let me do Tim Dillon's, who I subscribe to on uh, Patreon. Yeah, all the uh, Jasta ones are the ones that aren't. Um, what do you call that? 
paid for. You know what I mean? Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why I didn't, couldn't figure it out. They, and their FAQ didn't really help out. So podcast act just lets you put the password in right there with the RSS feed. Yeah, dude, I'm learning things every day. I'm paying my taxes, RSS feeds. People are uh, learning stuff right now on the podcast too, man. Yeah, did you know actually that uh, trundle is a word? And thank you guys for listening <laughs> to the show. I hope you guys tune in next week. I hope that didn't make you tune out and never come back. <laughs> Trundle's a good word. I still Check actually have out Hammerhead Grand Currents right now. <laughs> Hammerhead.com. Check them out. Until next time, my friends, keep it real. 